Hello, and welcome to this video. You know about Combs test and its types, but do you feel confused about the differences between direct and indirect Combs test and their practical applications? If yes, then keep watching this video. By the end of this video, you will have a clear concept of Combs test. For making things understandable, I have tried to make things simple. So, those viewers who want to know the technical details of the test, further reading is recommended. Now, let's dive in. Before going to Combs test, let's see a few clinical scenarios. Scenario 1. A young female is being evaluated for anemia. She is known case of systemic lupus erythematosus, and you want to evaluate her for autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Scenario 2. An elderly patient has developed hemolytic jaundice about five days after he received a blood transfusion during his hip surgery. You suspect hemolytic transfusion reaction. Scenario number 3. A young patient has developed anemia and jaundice. He was treated with penicillin for sore throat a week ago. You suspect drug-induced immune hemolytic anemia. Scenario 4. A pregnant female is having a prenatal antibody screening. Scenario number 5. Hospital blood bank is preparing one unit of blood for transfusion and is doing cross-match of recipient and donor's blood for compatibility. In all these scenarios, Coombs test is used. If you look closely, first three scenarios are discussing patients who have symptoms. And we want to see the presence of immune hemolysis in them. While in last two cases, we want to screen a mother and a blood recipient for the presence of antibodies, which if present and crosses placenta in case number four, can potentially cause immune hemolysis in fetus, leading to hemolytic disease of the fetus and newborn. And if antibodies are present in recipient's plasma in case number 5, and he receives incompatible donor blood, immune hemolysis of donor red cells will occur, causing transfusion reaction. In first three cases, the antibodies, if present, are already attached to the red cells and are causing hemolysis. While in the last two cases, antibodies are not on red cell surface. But if present, will be found in plasma. Direct Coombs test, detect antibodies, and, or complement, attached to the RBCs. So we will use direct Coombs test in the first three cases. Indirect Coombs test, on the other hand, detects antibodies in plasma, and we will use indirect Coombs test for screening the last two cases. We will now move on to the topic details. Direct Coombs test is also called direct antiglobulin test. And similarly, indirect Combs test is also called indirect antiglobulin test. Antihuman globulin, or simply antiglobulin, is used in this test, and that's why the test name bears the word antiglobulin in it. Antiglobulin is also known as Combs reagent. This antiglobulin is basically derived from non-human sources. If immunoglobulins or complement are present on RBCs, after adding antiglobulin, it binds to human immunoglobulin or complement and lead to agglutination in the tube. Now let's get back to the cases again. In the first three cases, as we have discussed, if the immune hemolysis is the problem, the immunoglobulins or complement are expected to be already present on the surface of RBCs. So all we have to do is take the red cells from the patient's blood, wash it with saline, and add antiglobulin to them. The antiglobulin will bind to the antibodies or complement on RBC surface, and agglutination will occur. The test is considered positive then. And this is what is called direct antiglobulin test. On the other hand, in last two cases, we want to detect the presence of antibodies in mother's blood and recipient's blood. The antibodies, if there, are likely to be present in plasma and not on RBCs. Therefore, here we need patient's plasma and not red cells. Then, we take washed red cells with known antigens. Mind it, these red cells are not from the patient. These red cells are incubated with patient's plasma. If the plasma contains antibodies to antigens on the RBC surface, 
the antibodies will bind to these red cells. In the next stage then, these RBCs are washed and antiglobulin is added. If antibodies have bound to RBC surface antigens in the first stage, antiglobulin will bind these antibodies and agglutination will occur. This is the indirect antiglobulin test and positive agglutination makes this test positive. Coming to the utilities of Coombs test. Now, you have fair idea that direct test is done for diagnosing presence of immune hemolysis, while indirect test is a screening test to look for presence of antibodies in plasma. Direct antiglobulin test is used for the diagnosis of autoimmune hemolytic anemias, drug-induced immune hemolysis, and alloimmune transfusion reactions. While indirect antiglobulin test is used in screening of donors and recipients' bloods, for cross-matching of blood before transfusion, and for antenatal screening of maternal blood for the presence of antibodies. The topic is finished here. Here is a question for you to check your understanding of the topic. You want to do Coombs test of a newborn suspected to have hemolytic disease of newborn. Which Coombs test will you order? direct or indirect? Let me know your answers in the comments section below. And this is it for this video. I hope you liked it and have understood Coombs test completely. If so, please click the like button and share this video with your colleagues who are struggling with Coombs test concept. See you in the next video.